In this video, I'm going to teach you what you need to know to balance chemical equations to get more GED science questions right so you can get a better score, hopefully pass faster, and move ahead faster. We use chemical equations to represent chemical reactions. And the first thing I want you to know is that the numbers in front when you see a chemical equation are called coefficients. And I've highlighted those coefficients in red. And the coefficients tell us how many NaOH and H3PO4 molecules will react and how many Na3PO4 and H2O molecules will be produced. And note that when you're doing your balancing, you can change these coefficients. So what if there are no coefficients though? Well, if no coefficient is written, you just assume that the coefficient is one. So in addition to coefficients, you also need to know about subscripts and knowing the difference between a coefficient and a subscript is very important. And those numbers on the screen that I've shown in blue, those come after the chemical symbol, and we call those subscripts. And subscripts tell us how many atoms of an element are in a molecule. Now, this is really important to know for balancing. You can't change these subscripts while balancing, so make sure that you have that straight. You can't change the subscripts, but you can change those coefficients. So you need to know the difference between reactants and products. And what I want you to know is that the substances on the left-hand side of the screen, which I've shown in blue, that's the 3NaOH and H3PO4, these are what we call reactants, everything on the left-hand side of that arrow. Now on the other hand, substances on the right-hand side which I've shown in red, these are called products. So everything to the right of that arrow we call products. Now, what about that arrow though? You might be wondering, what does it mean? Well, it just means reacts to yield, or you could just simply say yields. So if I were gonna read this out, I would say three molecules of NaOH react with one molecule of H3PO4 to yield one molecule of Na3PO4 and three molecules of H2O. Now, you don't have to know what all these chemical symbols mean for the GED test for the most part. You know, you might know that H2O is water, and you know, if you knew the names of these, we wouldn't have to say 3H2O and Na3PO4, but just know that there's nothing wrong with just looking at the letters and just reading them just like I'm reading them. Okay, so here's your first practice question. And the practice question I'd like you to answer, I'd like you to look at the reaction shown on the screen and tell me is in this case for H2O a product or a reactant. So I'd like you to pause the video, take your time figuring this out, and then we'll go over it. So the correct answer here is a product. We see that for H2O appears on the right hand side of that arrow. That's how we know it's a product. Okay, your next question. Is 3O2 a product or a reactant? Pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. So the correct answer is a reactant. Now we have to see 3O2 appears on the left-hand side of that arrow, so that's how we know it's a reactant. So here's another practice question for you. This is a fill in the blank. In 3O2, the number blank is the coefficient, and the number blank is the subscript. So the choices here, in one blank you're gonna put a three, and in the other you're gonna put a two, that's up to you to figure out which goes where. So pause the video, take your time, think it over, and we'll go over it. So the correct answer is that the number three is the coefficient in 302, and the number two is the subscript. Okay, another practice question here. What's the coefficient of Na3PO4? Pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. So the answer is one. Remember, the coefficient is the number in front, and here we don't see a number in front, so we just assume that it's one. Okay, another practice question, and ignore this. That my computer's trying to spell check this. Let me hit ignore. Um, this is true or false. The number four is a coefficient. So pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. The answer here is true. So the next question here is 2ZnCl2 a product or a reactant? So you know the drill by now. I'll pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. So the answer here is that 2ZnCl2 is a product. In this case, it says identify a subscript in the reaction shown above. So pause the video, you know the drill, try it out, and then we'll go over it. So the correct answer here is two. 
Okay, practice question number eight. Which can you change when balancing a chemical equation? The coefficients or the subscripts? And this is really important to know. So pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so the correct answer here is only the coefficients. So just remember that as we move forward now. Okay, so next we need to talk about a concept called the law of conservation of mass. Now you need to know that matter is neither created nor destroyed in the chemical reaction. It's only transformed. Therefore, the mass of the products must always equal the mass of the reactants. Now you need to note here that each element has its own mass. And accordingly, there must be an equal number of atoms of an element on both sides of an equation. And if this all sounds like I'm speaking a foreign language to you, don't worry, it's gonna make more sense as we get into some balancing examples. Now, we've spent all that time on all those questions because I wanted to lay a groundwork, so hopefully with the groundwork you've established, these won't actually be that bad for you. Here, the question is to determine uh, if a chemical equation is balanced. But before we, we do the question, I wanna give you some general guidelines here. And so I'll kind of walk you through this example here and then I'll give you more that you can try and then of course we'll go over them. But let me give you the strategy first um, that I would use here. So I would just first identify which atoms we see on the left-hand side. So I see a C, I see an H, and I see an O. I would next count these all up. So just going left to right here, right? And I see the two out front here. So everything here is gonna be multiplied by two, right? So what I mean by that is I see one C, but there's a two out in front. So that's why I would have two C, all right? Two carbon. And for the H's, I see three H's right here. I see CH3, but it's doubled because there's that two here. Now, I also see another H right here, okay? It's tempting to just say that's just one H, but it's really two times one. So really, this should not just be a one, it should be a two. So I did that because I want to make sure that you're not thrown off if you just say, well, here's another H. Uh, no, it's actually two because you gotta take that two out front and multiply it. So look, it should be six plus two equals eight. So on the left-hand side, we have eight H atoms in total. So what about the oxygens? Well, if I just go again, left to right, the first thing I see here is I see one oxygen, but it has a two as our coefficient out here. And so therefore I gotta multiply it by two, which gives me just two. But I have this other oxygen over here. So I would count that up. I have O2, there's a three out front. I multiply that gives me six. Okay, so if you have any confusion about how I just got these numbers right here, I highly recommend you rewind and rewatch that because this is important. This is really a key to understanding if things are balanced or not. But I would do the same thing to the right-hand side now. So again, I would start by, realize that we've got C, H's, and O's on the right and you want to count them all up. So going right to left, I would say here's a C. There's a two out front, so it's two. Now my O's, I would go left to right here. I don't worry about what's over here yet. I just look at one thing at a time here. So I see I've got O2, but there's a two out front. I've got to double it, which gives me four oxygens. Now here, when I keep going here, my H's, I see that I've got H2. There's a four out front. I've got to do four times two, which gives me eight. And also I've got an oxygen here, but it's times four, which would be four plus four. So eight oxygens in total. So now to see if it's balanced, we just see if they match. So on the left-hand side, I've got two carbons. On the right-hand side, I've got two. I've got eight H's on the left and eight H's on the right. Eight oxygens on the left, eight oxygens on the right. So yes, everything is balanced up. Okay, so the next case we've got here, one for you to try is the following chemical equation balanced. Pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so here's how I would recommend to start this. I would just count everything up, left and right hand side, and so I'm gonna go a little bit faster here. First, I'll look at the NaOH going left to right. I've got three Na, three Os, and three Hs, and then I look to the H3PO4, so when I do that, I'd have to add four oxygens and three Hs in there and then that P. So I would have my totals on the left hand side is Na3, O is seven, H6, and P is one. So I do this on the right hand side too, starting with the Na3, PO4. Then I wanna add in everything I see from the three H2O. This is my method for doing it. 
add them up and we see that we are balanced up. So the answer here is yes. Okay, so let me give you some tips before we jump right into balancing the equations. We've just been building a groundwork here. So the first tip is to try to balance the most complicated formula first. Then also note that on the other hand, you'll want to balance the least complicated thing last when possible. Now, you want to continually assess the number of atoms on each side as much as you need to. So here's the first problem and I'd like you to balance this up pause the video try to do it now and then as always we'll go over it okay so one way to start is to just take stock of what you have and on the left hand side I counted two C's I have six H's and this shouldn't say zero O's I have two O's right it's a little typo there so we've got now on the right hand side we see four C's we see two H's and if you count these up we've got nine O's because it's over here in the CO2 we've got Two right here times four gives us eight, plus another one over here would be nine. So we see we've got some work to do here, right? I want to now look and try to balance the most complicated thing first as a general rule of thumb, like I told you. So the most complicated thing that I would start with here is the C2H6. So what I would do is I could put a two out front and that's gonna bump me up to four carbons on the left-hand side. Now let me see how that changes everything else. So with that two out front, I now see that I'm gonna match my C atoms and it bumps my H up to 12 on the left-hand side. So now we're gonna to have to jump over to the right-hand side and I'm gonna stick a six out in front of the H2O and that's gonna balance my H's, but it's gonna change some other things most likely. And when I do that, it's gonna change the number of O's that I have on the right-hand side up to 14. So to fix the O's, all I have to do is stick a seven in front of the O2 on the left-hand side. And again, this should say two right here. Uh, and remember how I said that it's best to leave the simplest things like H2 or O2 for last? Well, it's gonna pay off big time here because all we have to do is stick that seven in the front and that's going to balance us out here. So. There's other ways to approach this, but this is how I recommend doing it. And here's the right answer. Okay, so the next question here says, balance the following chemical equation. And you see uh, CaNO32 plus Na2S yields CaS plus NaNO3. So go ahead, pause the video, try to figure this out. And then as always, we'll go over it. Okay, so again, I always recommend you start off by just taking stock of what you've got. So. On the left-hand side, I count one CA, I've got two N, I've got six O's, and I've got one S and two NA's. So whenever you see something like this, like NO3 with its two out front, it doubles everything. So that's why we have two N and it's O3, but since the two is here, we've got to double it, which gives me six O's. So taking stock of the right-hand side, here's what I have. I have one CA, one N, three O's. I have one S and one NA. I stuck a two in front of the NaNO3. By doing that, we now see that it's going to um, hopefully balance up our sodiums, which it looks like it did. I now see that my Ns are balanced up and my oxygens are balanced up. And so now we're balanced up and this is the final answer. So that one was pretty simple. Just had to stick that two in there. Okay, so example three, balance the following chemical equations. So you know the drill by now, I'd like you to pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so the left-hand side, again, I start off by taking stock. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I think it's helpful. Eventually, you'll be able to do this in your head, but I like to write it out when I'm teaching to start off. So I've got one zinc or ZN, I've got one H and one CL. On the right-hand side, I see that I've got one ZN, I've got two H's, and I've got two CLs. All right, so what am I gonna do here? Well, I probably am gonna want to go to the most complicated thing first, right? We're gonna leave the H2 and the ZN alone because they're not the most complicated. In fact, they're the simplest. My first move here is gonna be to put a two in front of the HCl. And I'm doing this because we only have one CL on the left side and one H on the left, but we need two of each. So let me do that and let's see how it changes the game here. Okay, and actually it looks like just by doing that, it looks like that balanced us up. Okay, the next question. Is this chemical reaction balanced? 4ZN plus 8HCl yields 4ZnCl2 plus 4H2. So on the left-hand side, I see 4ZNs, I see 8Hs, I see 8Cls. Right-hand side, we've got everything the same. So it looks like it is balanced, but it's not simplified here. So to simplify it, all you have to do is we're going to divide everything here, right? And we're gonna divide everything by four. 
and it's going to bring us down to Zn plus 2HCl gives us ZnCl2 plus H2. So know that if you ever balance a reaction and your answer doesn't match a multiple choice answer choice, note that the answer could be right, but it might need to be simplified. Thank you for watching.